Now, how can you build your own references and what can we do on track? Now, um, Ken's last discussion, uh, last video here for these little seminars was all about drills. And that's something that I really like to hammer in as far as utilizing data is we can actually view our progress with those drills on track. So say we go out and we're working on our steering input, working on slowing down our steering trace. Well, we can see that in the data. If we start out and we're pretty aggressive, we're turning in a bit early, but pretty fast, we can view how our steering rate changes by just analyzing it graphically there. Super good way to view your progress and also see, am I actually implementing what I think I'm implementing to help there? And that way, you know, as you see the progress continue, you may be able to see that time difference as well change in the data as it's coming down to. Now, experimentation also relates to drills, but an example I always like to bring up here is um, turn one at Watkins Glen, entering the boot at Watkins Glen. I've driven tons of cars there that seem to be in between gears. You never really know which one is faster. Is it gonna be faster to use third gear entering the corner, fourth gear, you know, maybe a bit more speed. And you know, this is as simple as it sounds, again, a great way for me to try it out. But I think a lot of people also forget about the proper methodology about going about experimenting on track. And what I mean by that is get a little scientific method here. Um, if we're thinking about doing A, then B, then back to A. So you go out of the session, say, let's try, all right, I'm going to try third gear in this corner, see how well it works out. Go through third gear, a couple laps, build up some speed. I'm getting more comfortable. All right, let's go ahead and try fourth gear now. So I'll try fourth gear for a couple more laps. And for a lot of people, that's typically where that change ends. They'll go and say, okay, let me look at third gear and fourth gear. All right, fourth gear may be faster here. It looks like I gained a couple tenths. Maybe that's what's worthwhile running through for the next, you know, next session or so, or, you know, I'm going to do that for the rest of the weekend. But what people forget to do is to go back to that first change. And the reason why we suggest that is because you could very well be improving as a driver throughout the session. So maybe you go from third gear, jump up to fourth gear, you gain a little bit of time. If you go back to third gear and you gain even more time, well, then you know, okay, well, maybe I was improving as a driver the whole session. And by going back to third gear, I actually found I picked up a little bit of time. It can be a little counterintuitive, but I always like to suggest that as a method. If you're trying out different things on track, utilize that, you know, go back to your first way of thinking. If, if you're purely looking at, you know, something like a gear where it's a simple change rather than searching for the proper driving style. In that case, you know, I would keep working towards uh, improving yourself in that way. But that A to B, then back to A change, something that we like to utilize for uh, for setup changes all the time. And it can create some false positives in certain cases as well. If you think one way is faster, one way is slower, when really, you know, your tires might've been going off or your driving might've been getting quicker throughout the uh, the day as well. Yeah, Colin, I've done a lot of suspension testing. That's exactly that, right? You oh, have yeah. your baseline. Mm -hmm. You have your baseline, and then maybe they have three different setups you're going to go through. So you go through all through those three of those setups, and then you go back to your baseline at the very mm -hmm. end. And that's just how it works. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I can think back to my uh, my first day testing an LMP3 car, and we made a change in the rear that actually got us some grip. It gained grip, but as a driver, I could I could really just feel the tires going off throughout the day. So I'm like, man, I can't really tell if it was a beneficial change because we're just losing so much grip as the uh, the tires wear off. So it's thing, you know, we went back to the first, the starting setup and it's like, okay, wow, that's a stark difference. Man, that setup change actually did help us yep. you know, decrease some of the loss. So I think a lot of people just tend to forget that extra step in there when they're changing different things or you know, working with their, uh, either their setup or their own driving styles in some ways. Yeah, when we get into the the nuts and bolts, really do deep dives on these things with on the suspension side is you typically have quantitative references that you're trying to improve in the data and so you'll you'll go back and reconcile from session to session whether you actually were able to achieve the quantitative difference that you wanted mm -hmm. to do setup changes like that. So it can be very subjective as well, but also mm -hmm. there's so much deep dive on the quantitative like mm -hmm. references on when it comes to that. Oh, absolutely. That's what race engineers are partly for out here, Ken, exactly. too. So, exactly. <laughs> And then lastly on this page, um, analyzing your splits and sectors it relates back to some other things we've been talking about. But if you go out in a session and uh, you have fast parts on your laps all around the different place, but you can't really piece it together. Or you're like, man, I really nailed my in lap. My first couple of corners on my, uh, my cool down lap felt really strong before I started to ease it off. Well, now you can go back and look at your sector data. Pretty much every data software will output different split times. So you're able to see exactly what sections you're, you're gaining on in different laps. The only caveat I have to say, and to be careful with that, AIM loves to have some weird sectors. Motec loves to have some weird sectors. So you might have one sector end at the start of a corner or right at the apex of a corner. So if you have one lap where you threw in a ton of speed, broke super, super late, uh, but you made it, you had a terrible exit as a result of it, you couldn't get out of the corner. Well, that's uh, it might show up as a purple, you know, three tenths up in this sector. Well, what happened on that lap? And you look at it and okay, well, I blew my brake zone. 
So my exit, I lost a full second, but it says the entry. Yeah, 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 it doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't show up. The Garmin Catalyst is doing <clears> that because the Garmin's got mm -hmm. so many sectors mm -hmm. that it builds in. So that's a lot of times you'll see their optimal lap is like, what the heck? Uh, <laughs> and then it just it doesn't work. But to that point, mm -hmm. when we go to a track that runs a professional series, we try to mm -hmm. recreate our track map based on the segments that uh, the pro, whatever pro organization runs, we'll try to recreate our segments. Or another one on that I've done as well, <clears throat> we're even working on my own stuff, mm -hmm. is working on a specific issue is I created a couple of segments that highlighted that issue. And mm -hmm. then I can see making changes whether that basically worked or not. Awesome. Yeah, they're all great ways. And I think yeah. if you're gonna dive more in depth with to this, uh, this self-analysis method, Creating your own sectors is going to be the way to go for a lot of these right. cases. Rule of thumb, I always like to, you know, start a sector right before a breaking zone and finish, you know, as soon as I'm out of the corner of the next straightaway. So if you have a series of corners that tie into one another, keep them together. Think of the S's at Coda this weekend, you know, Formula One was there for an example. If you mess up your first section of the S's, you're screwed for the next whole section. I mean, you really, you have to wait until you get out of that area until you're back on the straightaway to really see that full effect of it because it really does add on top of each other. So I just like to set them up by corners onto a straightaway. You know, if I have a straightaway, that's how I like to split things up. Typically keeps things a bit more organized that way.